Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a God Shift podcast. I am your host, Shana Rattler. I am so glad that you are here. I am looking forward to this episode. We had to reschedule a couple of times. You guys may or may not know, but I lost my father and I buried him about a month ago at the time of this recording. And so this guest was gracious enough to give me a little bit of grace and flexibility and not hold it against me that I probably told her at the last minute that I couldn't interview her. And so I'm excited to see what it is that she has to share with the world. But before we get to that, I would love if you would take a screenshot of where you are listening to this episode, whether it's your tablet or your phone or your laptop, take a screenshot of it and post it on social media. When you do, if you will do two things. Number one, if you will tag us here at a God shift, and number two, if you will list your biggest takeaway or your biggest aha moment. And I do that because I want this information to get in as many hands as possible. I'm not so much concerned about downloads, although my publisher is, um, but I don't really care about how many people hear it. If we save one life, if we bring one life into the kingdom, to me, that is worth it. And so if you will please do me that favor, I appreciate it and I thank you in advance. All right, well, I am going to read my guest bio and we will get started. So my guest today is a second generation American evangelist, wife and stay at home mom. She has a dynamic personality, a love for God and a fire to spread God's message across the earth to the lost. After radically getting saved in her backyard, answering the call of God, serving in ministry for four years, and attending seminary where she completed her master's degree, master's degree, her heart began to burn with a message for the American church. She is passionate about encouraging, equipping, and empowering the millennial bride of Christ to walk boldly in their God-given identity so they can transform the world around them. Everybody, welcome to the podcast, Sophie Stubbs. Hey guys, so my name is Sophie. I am a second generation evangelist. I am the author of my new book, The American Church. I am super passionate about just sharing God's message with his people and re-representing God to the millennial bride of Christ. And I am just so excited to be here today. Thank you so much. I'm, you know, in reading your bio, and in full transparency, I just got the bio literally like eight seconds ago, so I didn't get a chance to read it ahead of time, audience. But I love the fact that you talk about identity, right? Because, you know, this is a Godship podcast. My definition of a podcast is anytime we unlock our kingdom authority, collide with God's purpose and move into a greater destiny. Well, the very first thing that we have to understand if we are going to exercise kingdom authority is the identity that we have in Christ. And so I love the fact that when you look at your own personal mission statement, that that is included. Because I think oftentimes we're taught who Christ is. We're taught what he desires for us, what it is that he can do for us, but we don't necessarily recognize the identity that we have in him. Yeah. So how do you, Sophie, like, how do you define kingdom authority? Kingdom authority. I define kingdom authority as us walking in the version of who we are and who we were before he ever created the foundations of the earth. You know, it says before he formed us in our mother's womb, he foreknew us. That means he had a plan for us. He had a purpose. He strategically put us in this generation for such a time as this. And so walking in that kingdom authority is getting back in alignment with the father and by getting in alignment with the father, you get back in alignment with your true self, your true identity, and you're able to walk in power and take dominion over the area and territory that he has placed you on this earth to take dominion over. It's so good. You know, it's like, that wasn't just for Adam. You know, when Adam said like, you're going to have dominion, that wasn't just for him. That was for, that was for us as well. So I love this. I love the definition that you gave. So when you think back over your life, you know, whether it was it probably wasn't your pre-saved life because most people who are saved don't even recognize they have a kingdom authority, let alone how to unlock it. So unbelievers or unsaved really usually do not. But when you think about um, kingdom authority and can you ever think of a time in your life where you actually had to use your kingdom authority, whether it was a time to grow your faith, whether it was a time to overcome adversity, anything that you've been through, good, bad, or indifferent that required you to actually walk in that authority. Definitely. So 
I'm a second generation American. I lost my mom to brain cancer when I was 12 and my dad did not know how how to handle it and moved out of the country when I was 13. And so as a result, I walked through a lot of trauma before Christ and just a lot of mental health issues. And even after coming to the Lord, I've struggled with mental illness. And so while writing my like last book, The American Church, the Lord really gave me like this burning desire to write this message for the church with all the things that are going around in the world. And I was struggling with an undiagnosed bipolar like bipolar two diagnosis. And I remember not knowing what was going on at that time, but knowing that I was struggling. I'm a mom of three boys, five and under, and was getting my master's degree because the Lord had told me to go to seminary school and write this book. And in that moment, in that season, I had to take authority. I had to take my kingdom authority. I had to say, you know what? My body feels this way. My thoughts are telling me this, but the Lord has given me an assignment and he has given me a word for the American church in this hour. And I have to take authority so that I'm able to finish the assignment and do what the Lord has called me to do. And so there were many days of having to take authority and having to just remember who I was in the kingdom and just cry out to the father and just um, weep before him and just allow Allow him to be made strong in my weakness. And so I'm um, recently, yeah, while navigating, having a mental illness, raising three boys, five and under, um, obtaining a master's and getting this book out, I definitely had to use my kingdom authority so that I could do it. And what did you learn during that whole process? I learned that he's sovereign. I learned that even in the midst of our trials and our struggles and the hurt and the pain, um, that he is truly here with us and he empowers us through our weakness. I have learned that there's victory and vulnerability. And for so long, I hid my vulnerability. Being a woman in ministry, a lot of times there's pressure from not just the world, but pressure that we put on ourselves and we feel like we can't be transparent and open and vulnerable. But he has showed me that there's victory when I am weak and when I share my story, when I open up my mouth, when I share my testimony, I empower other people so that they know that God is no respecter of persons and what he did for me, he will do for them. And that whatever giant they are facing, that they can face it head on with the Lord, not in their own strength, but with the Lord. So I learned that he's sovereign and everything doesn't have to be going amazing to mean that he is like not right there with you, walking you through it. Yeah, I love it. It's like, you know, I, I think about, you know, the fact that he's a good, good father. You know what I mean? Like you hear times when uh, children, when, when families have gone through something and the parents say, I had to be strong for him. I had to be strong for her, meaning their kids. And that's exactly, you know, what God does for us as our father. You know, when we, it says that, you know, that in our weakness, that's when, you know, we're actually strong through him. And so, he looks at us as his, as his kids and like, oh, she's going through something. Well, I can't afford to fall apart because things are falling apart around him. I can't afford to not be strong because she's feeling weak right now. I actually have to be strong for mm -hmm. them. And so I love that, you know, that you were able to recognize that when you were going through your adversity is to say, you know what, I have, I still have someone that I can fall back on, even when I don't trust myself, even when I don't see a way out, um, at least I've recognized that there's somebody who is here that will never leave me or never forsake me. So that, that is so, so awesome. So we're going to pause and we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're actually going to get into some tips and advice of what people can do in their own lives if they find themselves in similar scenarios, okay? This episode is brought to you by the free guide, When God Says Shift. Inside, you'll discover the four shifts required to follow God's plan to move you into a greater destiny, expectancy, and possibility. Head to GodSaysShift.com. That's GodSaysShift.com to access it now. So Sophie, before the break, you were sharing, you know, what your thoughts were on the topic of kingdom authority. You shared a little bit about, you know, how you have actually had the opportunity um, to, to exercise kingdom authority in your own life. And so I never like to 
participate in any conversation, whether it's one where I am on either side of the table where I don't actually give people something tangible that they can hold on to, right? Something that they can actually say, oh, that sounds great in theory, but how do I actually put that in practice? As a matter of fact, I think that's one of the things that we're talking about the American church that drives me crazy about the American church because they'll tell you things like seek his face, yeah. surrender. Well, what the heck does that mean? You know what I mean? Like I can come up with my own ideas, but if I, if, if, if I hear on Sunday morning that I need to seek ye first the kingdom of God, well, if I'm sitting there on Wednesday, what can I look back and go, oh, I know for sure I've been seeking the first the kingdom of God. And so I want to make sure that we do not fall in that category. So if you were sitting across from someone and they were struggling with their identity in Christ, if they were struggling to actually unlock their kingdom authority, what advice would you give them to be able to make that shift in their life? So the first like tip I would give them is to get in God's word. It is, and I always like tell people, especially in the beginning, like sometimes it can be like a very daunting task because you're like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what book to start in. And so I always recommend actually starting in devotionals. Like there are amazing devotionals such as Jesus Calling and Awakened by Priscilla Shire, where you can just begin to like have a little prompt and you can begin to read like the word but really getting in the books and then the gospels, like really learning about just Jesus and his life and who he is and what he says about you. Another thing is prayer. This is another thing that I feel people really overcomplicate. Prayer is really just a conversation with God. And so, yes, like I am an intercessor. I love to pray. But I also talk to God like I am talking to you guys right now. But there's many moments in my car where I'm just like, God, I can't do this anymore. God, I need you. I'm tired. Like there's sometimes I don't even fully have the words. But all I say is just Jesus, Jesus, I need you. I need you now. And so being okay, like the way you would talk to your best friend, the way you would talk to a trusted person, opening up that line of communication and realizing that it's religion that puts these weights on us, that makes us feel like it has to be a certain way, but it does not have to be. It's literally a conversation. The third is worship. Worship has gotten me through the toughest seasons. The word of God says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. So that means that for you, it just looks like you're singing a song. And I know I've been there. I've been so depressed and so down and I'm singing these words and I absolutely feel nothing. And I'm thinking in my mind, God, do you even hear these words? But like a rushing wind, he comes in some way, some shape, some form. And before I know it, I have this energy that I didn't have before. I have this hope that I didn't have before. I have these desires and this zeal that I've never had before. And it's him showing me and telling me and telling you and showing you that our weapons of warfare are not carnal. When we call on his name, he answers. And so I would say, get in his word, no matter what that looks like, even if it's a scripture, start where you you are. Do not give yourself these lofty goals yeah. and these unattainable things that are going to discourage you and not propel you forward. God can work with the little that you give him. I'm thinking about the five loaves and two fishes that God multiplied. He's like, I can do more with the little you give me than I can do with nothing. And so giving him that five loaves and two fish, whether it's a scripture, whether it's a devotional, making sure that you're opening up that communication. And then lastly, making sure you are worshiping. And when I say worshiping, just singing on to the Lord, you can go to YouTube. There are many amazing just worship songs and just putting on the music. Even if you can't say the words, there's been times I've been so depressed. I can't even say the words, but I just let it wash over me or I put in my AirPods and God knows I don't have the strength, but I just let those words wash over me. And he, he sh always shows up. It might not be instantly, but he shows up. I love that um, because I think that getting your word is another one of those things that we're told to do, but sometimes people don't even know where to start, or even if they find themselves in a scripture, they don't know what to do with it. So I love how you said, you know, start with a devotional because the devotional is going to, you know, give you prompts. It's sometimes it's going to ask you questions and there's usually always a verse that goes with it as well. And so one of the things that I recommend that you do 
is the scripture that is associated or scriptures. I apologize for those of you who are watching this on YouTube. There's like a huge sun glare across my face. So I apologize. Um, but when you're looking at some of the scripture that is associated with the devotional, try to get out of the habit of just reading it and just being like, okay, I've read my scripture for the day because it's not a nonfiction book, right? It's not just a story. And so what I recommend that you do is journal as you're getting into the word. And so when you're reading that verse, I want you to write down what thoughts came to your mind. And I want you to write down at least one way that you can begin to apply that um, to your life. And I think that before you know it, that you will start to gain a greater and deeper hunger and thirst for the word than you have ever had before. Because we can't do anything if the word is not in us. And, you know, it's kind of like our hard drives on our computer. We, I don't necessarily need every single um, program that is on my computer. But when I go to get it, I want to be able to pull it out. And so the word is no different. You know, that thing's going to hit you different when you're going through different um, parts of your life. So I appreciate you um, sharing that tip. And hopefully everyone will commit to starting this evening or starting tomorrow morning to finding at least one scripture or portion of the Bible that they can read every single day and actually write out what it means to them and what is one thing that you can commit to doing to being able to apply that to your life. And I guarantee you that if you will do that, it will only be a matter of time before you have such a greater idea of who you are who you are, what you can have, what you can be, what you can do, what, you know, you fill in the blank. Okay. So, Sophie, before we get ready to wrap up, is there anything, um, like any final words that you would like to leave with the audience? Keep going. That's what I feel the spirit of the Lord is saying. Keep going. I know it's hard. I know it's tough. I know sometimes you can't see in front of you, but I just feel I'm saying, keep going. You may be blindfolded, but you are not alone. The one who is leading you, Jesus, he sees everything and yeah. he's literally leaving, leading you through it. So just keep going. Yeah. He'll get you to it. He'll lead you through it. It's, 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 that's also a, a, a song. Someone's got it. It is. <laughs> it is. I've actually been singing that song all day. Um, but anyway, Sophie, if, if somebody wants to find you online or follow you on social media, where do they go? So you would go to sophiestubs.org. You can connect with me there, www.sophiestubs.org. Also on Instagram, I am sophiestubs underscore. Sophie Stubbs underscore. Okay, perfect. You guys don't have to worry about how to spell that or exactly where the underscore goes because I will make sure that both of those things are in the show notes. And is there anything that you would like to offer our listeners if they would like to take things further with you? You've got a dynamic bio. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, the American Church, my new latest book, it is on Amazon, Walmart, Barnes and Noble. And it is an amazing book, a right now word for the American Church. Tell, so tell us a little bit about the book because I don't want people to be like, oh, I don't, I don't think I need that. Like, tell us, like, what is the premise of the book and what results can we expect to gain if we read it? So there's been so many changes in our world. I mean, from the global pandemic to the economy, it seems like there's just been utter chaos around us. And I really believe that it's left the souls of men aching and searching for answers and solutions. And I truly believe that the bride of Christ is called to be the solution the world has been looking for. But we cannot do that if we are a handicapped bride. And so the Lord began to just show me systems of the world that we have allowed to seep into our churches and the negative effects that it has had and then offer a word of encouragement and solutions so that we will be empowered to walk in our God-given identity so that we can change the world around us. And so I have a chapter called Consumerist Christianity, Dear Black People, Kingdom Race. We're talking about a lot of the things that are hard for the church to talk about, but that we need to talk about so that we can grow and be stretched. And so it's for the leaders of the evangelical church. And that's whether you have a title or you don't have a title, but you feel led to not just sit in the pews, but to truly transform and change your world around you. Yeah, much, much needed conversation. I believe that church is going to look very, very different, you know, in the coming years, because 
we are leaving the church era and we are moving into the kingdom era. And once we finally get there, we are not going back to any other era. And there are going to be some churches that are going to have to unlearn some things. There's going to be some churches that are going to have to do some things in a different way. And those that don't are probably not going to have any members. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad to see that you are leading the charge. And what is it that we need to be thinking about so that we can get back to what the original intention and design was when you think about the churches that were started back in, back in Acts? You know, religion and structure and, and all of this stuff, almost said the wrong thing, that came out of all of that was never the, God's original intention for what church I'm air quoting if you're listening to this on the audio was intended to be. So you guys go get that book. I will make sure that the link to that is in the audio as well. So you guys, thank you so much for listening to yet another episode of a God Shift podcast. Again, I ask that you would please share, share, share this with your friends, your family, your foes, because we need people to recognize that if they are going to have the life that they are praying for, that there are some things that they can do to actually accelerate that process. So please um, share this again. Thank you so much for being here, Sophie. Thank you everyone for listening. It's Shana Rattler. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.